I actually did some pretty rigorous research into bull semen, believe it or not. And uh, I believe and it. <laughs> I got quite into it. I, 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 what I don't know about bull semen is not worth knowing. So I built an episode around, you know, <laughs> the stealing of that. <laughs> I think, like, from where where I grew up, you know, which is in a very very working class area of Manchester. The idea that you would become a screenwriter was, you know, you might as well have said you'd become an astronaut because nobody did that. You know, I didn't even know how one would go about that. It seemed like this other alien world. So, you, you know, it was never, it was never sort of something, it was never sort of a career path. I had an assumption that I would, that I would get on. But what, what I did like doing from a very early age was writing, you know, writing short stories, writing um, little plays and, and whatever, you know, songs even, God help me. So, um, you know, I'd always written, uh, very, you know, inspired by like Roald Dahl and, the, you know, those kind of, like, those kind of twisty, twisty stories. Um, but no, it wasn't something I thought that I could make a career at. That came, that came much later. One day I was still working as a journalist and as a journalist, I went to interview Paul Abbott who was just about the biggest screenwriter in the country at that point. And I was interviewing, interviewing him about, I think it was clocking off. And because I was a cheeky bastard, I, I, <laughs> I, I sort of, well, actually what happened was we'd done the interview, we'd done the journalism and he said, do you want to have a drink? And he's, uh, to this day, I think it's only because Paul likes to have a glass of wine that, that I managed to actually say this. So we're both having a glass of wine and I said, you know, oh, actually, I'm a bit of a writer, you know, I was like, oh, God, I bet he was like, oh, you know, kill me now. But anyway, he was gracious enough to say, oh, well, send me a script and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I, I sent him a script and, and I don't know if he ever read it or if he didn't read it, but he certainly passed it on to um, Nicola Schindler at Red, at Red Productions and, and they read it, she read it, they read, Red Productions read it. Uh, and that was the start, really. That was the that was the, the moment where everything opened up. You know, I, I sometimes hear people say things like, oh, you know, I'm sort of waiting for inspiration or I'm, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. I'm just I'm, I'm, I'm doing these chores and then I'm going to write. It's like, like, well, I think discipline, you know, being very disciplined, even though I know it's a very dull thing to say, I, I think it's the only it's the only way you're going to get anything done, you know. It is quite a difficult thing to, you know, to, to keep putting yourself in that space day after day after day. Um, and there are obviously days, and I'm, you know, I'm only human. There are days where you don't feel like it so much. But I suppose it's like any job, you know, there are, I guess there are people who, you know, cut hair for a living who um, don't feel like it some days, but they still go in and cut hair, you know. So I still... Um, go to my desk and, and and try and be creative you know I think it's just you've just got to try and I don't think you can give yourself the permission to just go oh well, I'm not going to do it today because I don't feel like it you know it's a job you've got to treat it like a job and you've got to you've got to um put something down on the page even if it's rubbish put something down and then and then you can change it later you know with Brassic certainly it's certainly in the first two series I would say me and Joe did did all the heavy lifting because we were we were just trying to make each other laugh. He he had brought lots of stories from his background um, and and funny things that he'd observed and, and we weaved them together. On series three, I think because because time was against us and we needed to do more episodes, um, we we started to work in a little bit of a different way. And Alex Ganley and Daniel Ward came on board. Somebody, I think it was David Livingston, the the, the exec, had come up with. He just found this piece of information in the news about somebody who'd who'd stolen some bull semen because it because it's actually worth a lot of money and Brilliant. as soon as I as soon as I heard yeah. that I thought that well there's an episode you, in that we're using sure. it, yeah. you know, there's definitely an episode in that so then I actually I actually did some pretty rigorous research into bull semen believe it or not and <laughs> Uh, I believe it. <laughs> I got quite into it. I, 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 what I don't know about bull semen is not worth knowing. So I built an episode around, you know, <laughs> the stealing of that. <laughs> I mean, I am 
terrible at verbal pitching, absolutely appalling. Um, I've, I've, I've done it in America a, a few times and it's, it's, just, it's just like my idea of hell, having to go and do a song and dance routine for half an hour where I pitch the story and try and be entertaining. I mean, it's just awful. I mean, why would you do that to, to, to writers? You know, writers write things down for a living. That's their skill. I'm, you know, I, yeah. I am not, as you can probably see from this, um, <laughs> this, this Zoom, that, you know, I, I, I'm not the, the, the sort, you know, I'm not kind of e endlessly eloquent and I can't, you know, I can't pitch ideas that way. Um, so it's, it's, it's bizarre. But having said that, I do think that, one thing I've learned from saying stuff out loud and whether you, whether you do that in a formal way or a kind of slightly more informal way, like you can do in the UK where I might go and see Polly Hill at ITV and pitch something informally is when you start to say an idea out loud to somebody, even if you do that to your you know, partner or friend, um, it will expose the weakness of the idea. I think, you know, because sometimes you can hear yourself talking, think, oh, this isn't very good, is it? This is sort of falling apart in my in my mouth here, you know. So I do think it, I do think it's a worthwhile exercise. And I certainly think it sharpens the idea if you can if you can tell it to somebody first. There have been times where I've sort of stepped my foot into another production company because I wanted to do the project and it's not worked out so well because the fit hasn't been very good or you know it's just been I've been put with somebody to develop a show who I don't get along with or I don't like you know that's just going to happen in life you know I'm sure there's people who don't who've not enjoyed working with me as well but you know life's too short for that stuff you've got to you know if, if you've got any choice in the matter you've got to try and work with people who you like and respect and you know you're going to produce something good with and if you get a sniff that you're not going to get on then it's going to be a nightmare I mean, me and Joe have got quite feisty with each other, and particularly on set one time, we got really like, ah, you know, <laughs> really? <laughs> which is not cool, but, it, you know, it, we were... But you know each other, hopefully, well yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were giving each other a man hug, you know, half yeah, an hour exactly. later. It was on fine. You, you know, when you're creative working... Creative relationships, you know, creative relationships can get quite you know they can get quite lively sometimes it can get quite impassioned you know but as long as yeah. it's all done in the right spirit of, of, of getting the play you know getting the show to be as good as it can be I mean I think you've got to I think you've got first of all is if you're going to be in if you're going to be in the creative business you're always going to get rejected you know unless you are um uh, uh, Sally Wainwright or or, or or you know Stephen Moffat then you, you are always going to have I'm sure if you ask those two they, they would say that they've been rejected also rejected, although it just yeah. doesn't seem like it sometimes <laughs> um but you know you're, you're yeah. always going to have to um you're always going to get that stuff you know but, yeah. but you've got to learn you've got to learn to deal with it but i think the, the, the thing to remember is that um first of all you've only been rejected from one place you yeah. know so if it's if it's a robust enough idea there are other places to take it and even if even if it doesn't get picked up now if it's a good idea you might revisit it the truth is it's it's somewhere in between so i i can't stand doing beat by beats because i find it very tedious um but i also think you need a roadmap you need a kind of you need a start middle and end you sort of need to know where you're going a bit like setting off on a journey you know i might um i might drive to uh you know the bottom of wales but i I don't necessarily I know where I know where my destination is, but I don't necessarily know which way I'm going to get there exactly. So what I tend to do is just kind of roughly put some markers down of things I want in the episode, but don't tie it all up exactly in advance, because then that still gives me flexibility to be creatively surprising to myself. What do you look for when you're hiring a writer for the room? Um. Well, usually you're trying to get a mix of people, you know, you're, especially if you're hiring a, a, a few people, you're, you're trying to get an interesting mix of people. So that can sometimes come into play. Um, but obviously the main thing is that you want people who are bubbling with ideas and enthusiasm because they're the two most important things in the end. You, know, you don't want someone who's just going to sit there being kind of mute. 
you know, you need, you need, you need enthusiasm. I, I put a lot of store by enthusiasm. Um, yeah, so I want, I want people who are going to bring, sort of bring ideas and, and are not afraid to chuck things out. You know, on, when we're doing the, when we're doing the Harlan shows, we always say, put any idea on the table. It doesn't matter. We sometimes say, okay, not this, this is the shit version, but what is this? You know, because the worst thing you can do is, is self-censor yourself, you know, because, because if I say something rubbish, if I give a rubbish idea, that person over there might go, yeah, 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 no, it's not that, but that actually, that makes me think of this, you know, yeah. and off you go.